welcome back to another so episode of Ready, Set, Sell. My name is Donnie Wong, and we have my co-host today, Michael Siervo. What's going on, Donnie? Really excited. This is going to be a good episode. We've been talking about this for a couple of days now. This one is going to be a banger. We are talking about branding today. Mm -hmm. So for you guys out there, if if there was a, a Mount Rushmore of leverage, on that mountain, there would be money, there would be people, technology, but the fourth one would be branding. And branding is the one that your competition can't take away from you. So on today's show, we're going to talk about how about your brand and how to lay the foundation for domination. Love it, love it, love it. You know, every successful person, whether they're in the public eye or if they're a politician, they've created their brand, love it or hate it, if you'd like Donald Trump or not, he has a specific brand. And what's interesting now is you're starting to see sales guys starting to create their own brand because it's not only a big corporation that has to have a brand. I think people have to have a brand as well. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And before we get into uh, the, the, the foundations of branding, I think we should get into the definition. And there's so many definitions, mm -hmm. so many ways to talk about it. But the easiest one that I've ever found is that branding it's what people say about you when you're not around. I love that. I think that's uh, Jeff Bezos who talked about that. It's it's simple, but you know, it just gets to the point. You know, the other one I saw from uh, Scott Cook was, a brand is no longer what we tell the consumer it is. It is what the consumer tells each other it is. I think that nails it to the T. Right. So that's what we're going to break down today, folks. We're going to break down about the branding, how to really get the foundation of your brand, why it's important, and what happens when you do it right. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to a couple of guys, and they said, well, what's the point of having a brand? Like, I don't need a brand. The statistic that jumped up to me is like 50% of people follow one to four brands on social media. That's crazy. And 26% follow five to nine brands. 22% follow 10 or more brands. And 3% follow zero brands, which tells us that the consumer is following some brand, which means they're trying to find something that they can relate to. And I think the big one is relate to, and it's also recognizable mm -hmm. because a brand is consistent. Right. When you go to McDonald's, you said this earlier. Yeah. We were talking off camera. When you go to McDonald's, it might not be the best burger in the world, but you know exactly what you're going right. to get every single time. I'm going to get consistency. I'm going to get this great service. I'm going to get these, uh, maybe not the best burger, but I know I'm going to get a great burger. Right. I know I'm going to get the best fries though. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, and that's so important when you talk about the consistency, because it holds you accountable, not just as a corporation. Like we're talking, the vast majority of the people watching this are sales guys. Mm -hmm. So the sales guy is creating his own brand, but if there's a disconnect with what he says his brand is versus what he really is, you got a major problem. I mean, we saw this happen with Ellen DeGeneres. Like she talked about being kind and all of a sudden the real person came out and said, yeah, she's not that kind. Right? So I think there are people out there that are crafting a really good brand, but it holds them accountable. I mean, think about some guys out there that you follow, just regular people that have a brand, and you know it's them. That's what they stand for. Like, who's who pumps uh, jumps up to mind for you? One of the biggest ones, especially we're talking about sales guys, is Ryan Serhant. And I didn't know who he was whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Found him on YouTube. Turns out he was on a show called Million Dollar Listing, which we've heard about Million Dollar Listing. Never knew about this guy. Mm. Dove into a, just a few of his videos, and I figured right away that, you know what? He's incredible. He's incredible. He didn't talk about much about sales, but what he did do was really push lots about real estate, push lots about what he does, his journey, his story. And that is what makes brand so mm -hmm. compelling. It gives the, the audience something to follow because humans, we need stories. Mm. That's what locks us and keeps our attention. And what Ryan did was he showed me the story about where he came from, what he had to overcome, how he overcame it, and now where he is today and where he operates and why. And when you have that brand, that's what you're really buying into. Right now, for instance, I'm looking for a winter jacket. Mm -hmm. And when you look at winter jacket, there's three styles, right? There's your parka, there's your bomber, and there's your super puffer. What sets them apart? They all have down, they all have zippers. But when I started digging into it, I started finding, okay, well, they started because they came from, they were mountain climbers. Right. They came from mountain climbing technology. It's like, okay, when I came from mountain climbers, this is the DNA from, they, they took this to polar expositions. That's your, uh, that's your Canada goose. Mm -hmm. What does Patagonia do? And when I started digging deep, I started finding pieces of me really liking what they did here, emotionally what they did here. And that is the brand. It's the mm. storytelling. It's uh, it's so powerful because as a consumer myself, I want to relate to a corporation that has a brand that represents me. 
Like, I mean, I'm not going to rock some some clothing that I know is flat out racist or you no, know, just bad people, right? You want to wear something or purchase something or drive something that represents you. And as a salesperson, I think the good thing about that is once you identify what your brand is, you're automatically going to filter a bunch of people who are not going to buy off you anyways. That's right. So once you find out this avatar, this ideal client, and you know what your brand is, you get that laser focus as a salesperson who you're going to serve. So, Michael, you have a great exercise for this for mm-hmm. our salespeople out there who either – don't care about the brand yet or haven't been able to, to to hammer it out, what is this exercise that you have? You know, one of the things I used to ask myself because I used to think that I am a certain way. Uh, so the easiest thing is name like write four words that would describe you. So I'm, I'll ask you, what's the four words that would describe you? I'm cheating because I, I we talked about this before off camera, but mine are simply hustle, creativity, right. grit, reliable. Mm-hmm. I love it. And for me... It's changed over the years, but it's it's always been innovation, uh, forward thinking, integrity, and um, uh, of course hardworking. Right? Those are the things. And and the other one, if I were to toss in a five, would be high high standards, like high quality elegance. So I try my best to conduct myself in accordance with the brand that I think I'm creating. Now the exercise is. Ask a friend, a trusted person who you know is going to be honest with you, and say, "Hey, Donnie, can you do me a favor?" Can you describe me in four words? And if the four words are consistent with what you think your brand is, then you've nailed your brand. You're living your brand. If not, then you got to take a step back and, and, and you know figure out whether or not you're doing something wrong or maybe recraft your brand. Another way for you for you salespeople there who maybe you don't have that close, honest group that you can speak to is really think about what you get most excited about. Mm. What really gets you excited? Or even better, which movie character do you really admire the most? What about them? Yeah. For me, it's James Bond and Spider-Man. Yeah. Right? Really love the serious get it done, beat up anyone that, that gets in the way, <laughs> get the mission done. But at the same time, don't take it too seriously. Right. The other opposite end of the spectrum is what are the times or situations where you really find that you're getting the butterflies in your stomach, mm. you're getting the anxiety, something about the situation you don't like. Those are the things that are rubbing against your values. Pull those words out. Try to scribble as many on a piece of paper. Pull four or five of those out. Mm. Those are the ones that are most likely going to be your values. You know, I, I, I completely agree. And I think we can talk about brand for several episodes. I, I, I think 11 minutes doesn't do it justice. But just to reiterate, there's such importance to building a brand. So, Donnie, for, for the people out there, the sales guys that say, well, I don't have a brand. My brand is my company. You know, I work for XYZ Firm and I leverage their big brand. That's why, that's why I work underneath them. I still think you have to have your own personal brand, even within an organization. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, these days when we have these free platforms, your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, whatever it is, you can post. You can post uh, topics of interest. You can post behind the scenes. You mm-hmm. can post what's going on in your life, lessons you've learned. You can post the good days, the bad days, the successes, more importantly, the failures. Right. People want to deal with uh, uh, an, an honest character. Mm-hmm. There are kind of, we're in the age where we don't want to deal with as much of these big faceless brands. We do have the big trusted brands we want to deal with, say your Nikes, but who does Nike sign? They want to sign the top athletes right. that have the same mentality that Nike brings forth. Right. The, the other reason why I think a salesperson who's watching this wants to create their brand is you want to have that brand equity. You want to be able to be a price maker versus a price taker. So for instance, if you perceive yourself as a high-end brand, you will conduct yourself as a high-end brand and charge high-end prices. And and you know a great example would be Apple, Nike, and Starbucks. They are premium brands. So I think for the salesperson who is focusing on being that brand, conduct yourself that way and, and make sure people know this is what you represent. So they're not surprised with the ticket ticket shock when they see, holy, here's the invoice, here's how much I'm going to charge you. Of those examples, I specifically like uh, Apple mm. and Starbucks. Sorry, sorry, Nike and Starbucks right. because they charge the premium prices but for commodities, mm. shoes, and coffee. They right. can charge a high-end price. So I love where you position that, where it's when you have a brand as a salesperson, they understand your clients, what they're getting, what to expect, what you stand for. Therefore, doing business with you, there, you might get the cheapskates out of there, depending on maybe you are a discount brand. Maybe you're the top of the class on the most expensive, but it's because you get top-tier service. Mm-hmm. Another part about the brand I absolutely love 
is when the client can see a portfolio, a body of work, or really understand your story, it's almost like it's instant report. Mm. You jump from, hey, your first meeting to your second meeting to all of a sudden instantly, I love this guy. Right, I love right. what you did. I love what you did there. I love your work with the community. I love how you handle yourselves during the failures. We should do business. Tell me more about that. Yeah. You know, it humanizes the interaction, right? I think Boom. it's so powerful because at the end of the day, I'm giving up my hard-earned money. I want to know who I'm, I'm spending my, I'm, you know, foregoing this money uh, with, right? And, and I want to know who the salesperson on the other side of a transaction is. I think the last point I want to talk about is it's more so the consistency. You talked about McDonald's. Just because you have this brand doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the best, right? I mean, McDonald's does not have the best burger, but in a world where consumers have so many choices, they are looking for consistency. Best known is better than best. Absolutely. Listen, we're running out of time. We're definitely going to turn this into an episode two. I think when we do a part two of this, we really need to break down how yourself and myself are really digging into the personal brand. Mm -hmm. Sales world out there, thank you for joining us once again. If you guys like this show, if you even got an ounce of value, if it helped you, all we ask is you share this with one person. This is Ready, Set, Sell with Michael Siervo and Donnie Wong. Take care. Peace.